Before we get onto it, I want to just stress how undemocratic this debate was. How the whole mass of the people were kept captive to two bourgeois parties who organized the debate. The so-called election commission is the Democrats and the Republicans. And they excluded everybody. And so the masses had only two, two capital stooges to choose from. And this is, should always be borne in mind in this imperialist hellhole here, how undemocratic the system is. And I want to give a criticism also to Amy Goodman on Democracy Now! Because she, who does very good work on some issues and, and brings a lot of exposures, I don't want to take that away from her, but she had a quote alternate debate in real time. And who was on the alternate debate? It was the Green Party and the Justice Party, two liberals. But you had socialists in this campaign, like PSL, like the SWP, like Peace and Freedom Party. She didn't even put them on. So she narrowed, she went from showing the big bourgeois candidates to the little bourgeois candidates. <laughs> That's what really happened. And she should be called out for that by everybody in the movement. <laughs> I want to just say a couple of things about Romney uh, on the debate. Uh, it, Romney surprised Obama and everybody else by coming out, to, not just for jobs, but not, he said, I'm not going to tax the rich. Uh, I'm, for, I'm for, for a lot of teachers. I'm for every, he's for everything. Except paper. Yeah, see. Now, everybody's going down and counting how many lies he told and so forth. But there's another point to this. To understand Romney, and maybe Obama's people were like thrown by this, you got to see where he's coming from. He wanted to be president since 2008 and before. And he ran in the primaries in 2008 in the Republican, and he lost. And he was determined to come back in this, this year. But since 2008, there's been the financial crisis, the Tea Party, the racist offensive by the right wing, and everything has moved over to the right. But you can't be president in the United States, except if you run on the Democratic or Republican ticket. And he was running on the Republican ticket. And there was no way that he could, being from Massachusetts, being branded a moderate by this new right-wing controlled caucus of the Republicans, except to move all the way to the right on everything. Women, immigrants, uh, throwing red meat to the right wing all the time. But his strategist realized it's one thing to run in the right wing primary for the Republican Party. And it's another thing to talk to 70 million people. You gotta, you gotta stop and think. So he, you know, Obama says, well, where was Romney? He didn't show up. It was somebody else. No, it was Romney doing what the bourgeois politicians do, playing the shell game, realizing he's talking to 70 million people and hiding this right-wing program desperately and thanking his lucky stars that Obama didn't bring it out. And the next day or two, he ran over to the TV and told them about the 47% and said, Mia culpa, I take it back. Because he wants to be president. And their program, they can't get to be president. He picked Ryan as his vice president. And everybody was saying, all the right wingers were, yay, okay, here we come. Break down the doors. We're going to overturn everything, but they pulled Ryan back.
you don't see Ryan that much. And when he talks, he mo- mainly talks about jobs. Not about women having no right to an abortion even if they're raped and pregnant. He don't bring that up. And he doesn't bring up Medicaid. He's not going to go to Florida. Trust me. So, the Republicans maneuvered over to the center. Whether they'll stay there or not is another story. But that's what happened in this debate with respect to Romney. He took everybody by surprise, and the Republican establishment is breathing a sigh of relief that maybe they have a chance in the election. Because he's not... He's not going to do stupid things like offering to bet Rick Perry $10,000 on TV. On TV when he's trying to win over the population and he's in a debate with Rick Perry and he says, I'll bet you $10,000. I forgot what it was about. Masses are looking at this guy. $10,000. You know, so he's moving over. So we got to watch that and see where it goes. Uh, Larry covered Obama very uh, well, and I, I don't want to go into Obama. He, he's a centrist. He never was a liberal, ever, 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 uh, uh, in, even when he was in the state senate in Chicago. Uh, so, and he doesn't fight, and Larry explained all the reasons why. But there's also a little piece of this election that needs to be uh, discussed. Just, that makes it different from the 2008 with respect to Romney and Obama, actually. In 2008, a lot of big Wall Street firms went for Obama. They wanted to put a new face on imperialism. Bourgeois politics was in a complete crisis. There was a health care crisis that was getting out of control. Nobody was covered. The immigration, there was civil war in the ruling class and politics over the question of immigration. That had evoked this huge 2006 general strike. Something had to be done about that. They were still embroiled in the Iraq war. And they wanted uh, to bring uh, Obama in to try to see if he could use his conciliatory powers, which were famous uh, for in, Chicago, in Illinois. But one million people who voted for Bush in, in 2004, uh, in 2000. Uh, no, in 2004, when Obama was running for the Senate, they also voted for Obama because he was kind of in the middle. So Wall Street said, okay, let's try this. Then came the financial crisis. Now in 2012, in the wake of the financial crisis, there's all these new innovations of regulation. The Dodd, the Dodd uh, Frank Dodd Act, which was to regulate Wall Street and control the amount of speculation coming out of Wall Street. And there's the Consumer Financial Protection Agency that protects investors against fraudulent banking. And also, there's the question of the tax benefits that were given to them and handed to them. They have a lot of money on the line in this election. And uh, 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 what's his face? Uh, Romney is one of them. He's one of them. He comes from them. Rare in a presidential candidate, coming directly from the financiers. That's rare. It's like when George Washington ran and he was the biggest slaveholder in the country. It's, it's a little bit like that, but not quite. So they have switched. The majority of them, Chase Morgan, uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, 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 Morgan Stanley, uh, J.P. Uh, uh, 
<coughs> the others, I, I, there's two others. I don't know about Bank of America. I don't know where they stand. Goldman Sachs. They've switched. They've shifted over to Romney. But for a very specific class reason, Romney has promised to overturn the Dodd-Frank legislation. He's promised to give them the tax benefits and keep them for them. It's in the pocketbook. So they, 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 they got behind him, and that's one of the reasons, as ridiculous as he is, he still has some strength. That he could get up and go to England and tell the England, you guys don't know how to do in the Olympics, you know, on his first foreign trip and stuff like that. They must have all gone, oh my God, what are we betting on here? Our horse is uh, out there, he's not even on the track, he's up in the field someplace. But they still stuck with him because money talks with the ruling class. That's, that's what they're very interested in. So that is a factor in the election. But the other thing is, we got to figure out, as Larry said, how do we talk to people in this election? Because we do have to be tactful, as Larry said, especially with black workers, or with the retirees, or with women who fear, you know, what they put in their program. And uh, one way is, is, is to, is to uh, you don't have to try, if you had talking to a black worker or somebody, you don't have to drag them, try to drag them away from the polls, you know? You can let them listen and say, well, here's my decision. Here's the way I I went about it with my thinking. I just want you to know, you know, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. You could say, well, you know, they're both talking about jobs. They're all going to both fix the job problem. But neither one of them can fix the job problem because this is capitalism. The capitalists want to lay people off because they can't make enough profits, they can't sell enough goods. It doesn't matter whether it's Romney or Obama. It's a crisis of the whole capitalist system from here to Europe to Asia. And it's a false debate. It's a, it's, so I, I couldn't possibly vote for anybody like Obama on that basis because he can't solve the jobs crisis. It's rooted in, in the capitalist profit system. And of course, I'm against everything Romney stands for. That take, that's taken for granted. It's a false debate over health care. Obama holds out that children can be on their parents' plan till they're 26. And also, they uh, allowing nobody's allowed to refuse a, you for a pre-existing condition. And that's good. But, comes 2014, everybody's going to have to go and spend their money, go into the market, and find some insurance policy and buy it in some of these exchanges, and millions of people are going to be either underinsured or uninsured. So for some small concession, they took a single payer off the table, they took everything that we need off the table. So neither one of them is really going to give the masses of people who need it health care. And by the way, if you don't have a job, you can't pay for health care. Or if you're making, you know, seven fifty an hour, you can't pay for health care. So it's a false debate. Just like debate the debate over jobs. And that's why I can't vote for the Democrats. If you listen to the whole debate and the Democratic Party convention, you didn't hear the word worker once. That's us. They're trying to take our identity away as workers. They're, tr they're saying middle class, middle class, middle class. I, what middle class? I go and I sell my labor every day to a boss. I'm exploited. <laughs> By some middle class people, by the way. 
We are the working class. They're trying to destroy our identity, our class identity. And they repeat it over and over and over in the, com in the convention and in the debates. And that itself is an attack on us. They don't recognize us as workers. And speaking of that, it was pointed out to me yesterday, a statistic that I read a while ago. 50% of the population in the United States is either considered poor or near poor. Near poor is 150% of the poverty level. And 50% of the population lives in that status. So let's suppose you're concerned with the middle class. What about the other half of the population? They never mention the word poor. They don't mention how they're going to fight poverty. They don't mention anything about it. In that whole debate, and it was on the domestic issues. It was supposed to be on the domestic issues. Certainly Romney didn't mention it, but Obama didn't mention it either. So how could I vote for him? That's part of my decision, not to vote for him. And what about the question of mass incarceration? It's a worldwide scandal about what the United States does to its youth. It's a worldwide scandal. You go any place in the world, and everybody knows that mass incarceration takes place in the United States on a level no other country has even come close to. Where was it? What about the two and a half million people in jail? What about their families, their friends and relatives who are also suffering from mass incarceration? Not a word. I can't vote for that. I can't vote for somebody who's silent on that. And what about the record number of deportations? The most deportations in the history. Nothing about that. So Obama signed the Dream Act for two years, and that's the end of it. But what about the millions who are underground because they're undocumented and losing their rights every, in all these states, in Arizona, in Colorado, in New Mexico, Florida? That didn't come up. It didn't come up. Don't you think that should have come up? I mean... And of course, the question of women's rights and gay rights, these homophobic forces, it did it. well, they may bring that up later in a, if a, in a different segment. I don't know. How am I doing? It's my turn. Yes, sir. What? Okay, I, I, I'm going to wrap it up then. We're Marxist Leninists. We view the elections like everything else. From a point of view of Marxist theory, from the point of view of class understanding of the political process. And we stay with Marx and Lenin on the question of what it's what it really is. It's Capitalist elections boils down to the masses voting for which faction in the ruling class is going to oppress them for the next few years. That's what an election under a capitalist democracy is. Because a capitalist democracy is a dictatorship of the capitalist class. And they have developed over the years the most effective method of sustaining their rule, which is to give the masses the impression that they have a say in their own fate while the bourgeoisie manipulates capitalist politics, the law, education, the media, and every other thing that they own to fortify capitalist exploitation, oppression, and imperialism. 
That's what capitalist elections are about, reinforcing capitalist democracy, which is an illusion for the masses, but the capitalists do have their own democracy because they control everything at the top and they fight their battles at the top through all the institutions that they own and control. And we are reduced to spectators, having to watch two bourgeois candidates have a meaningless debate in which all of them are, are lying, <laughs> and, if not lying, trying to deceive and hide things because as Larry said, when it's over, they're going to go back and do what the ruling class wants to do. Some will do it worse to the masses and we will have to fight them harder and some will do it not quite as bad, but they'll do it. I'll finish this way. What is happening in this election, there is a special circumstance that there is a black president and that puts a great burden upon us to handle this question tactfully. On the other hand, there is a root, a, 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 a uh, what do you call it? A pattern that has existed in the last how many years that has shaped up the way it shapes up in every capitalist presidential election. It is, this is the election of your life. This is the election that if we lose this, we lose everything. And no matter how much you have to hold your nose, you've got to go to the polls. And so, whatever. It's all at stake. Let's go back to 1948 when Dewey was running against Truman and everybody said, you, oh, Dewey, he'll just take us uh, all the way back. And then Truman got in and started the Korean War. Bloody conflict on the peninsula. Kennedy was running against Nixon and everybody said, you've got to vote for Kennedy or we're all sunk. And what did Kennedy do the first day of his, the first foreign trip of his presidency? He went to the Berlin Wall and he said, ich bin ein Berliner. In other words, on the Cold War, we're gonna, we have tanks here. We're ready to fight you. He stoked the, the fires of war. And then he had the Bay of Pigs invasion. And then he practically plunged the world into nuclear war when the Cubans wanted to have missiles to protect themselves against a second version of the Bay of Pigs invasion, which was in the planning stages. And then he sent the first 15,000 soldiers to Vietnam. And he was killed before he could do any more damage. And then came Johnson against Goldwater. And Goldwater wanted to bomb everybody into the Stone Age, so you had to vote for Johnson. So Johnson had the Gulf of Tonkin frame up incident of Vietnam and send half a million troops to Vietnam. And by the way, he didn't hesitate to call in the National Guard and the military against the black rebellions in the black community. He sent Cyrus Vance to put down the rebellion in Detroit. And I could go on. And the same with Reagan and McGovern, and it was the same with Clinton and Bush. It's the election of your life. But when you look back at these elections of your life, the Democrats did so much damage to the world and to the workers that they don't deserve one ounce of confidence from the, from the oppressed. And whatever happens, when, when, when Goldwater was defeated and Johnson went to uh, raise the war level, we fought, him, we fought him in the streets. When Reagan won, we called the May 3rd demonstration of 100,000 people, and then we formed the All People's Congress, and we fought Reagan in the right wing. And if Romney gets in, we will fight him. 
It could be very well what this young person said down in North Carolina. It could very well be that if Romney gets in, it'll take the chain off them and revolutionary organizations prosper when it gets hard and the struggle gets fierce. That's when revolutionaries come to the fore and can take advantage of a situation to push the bourgeoisie back and elevate the class struggle. That's it.